Arm uh, did a infrastructure update where they talked uh, about uh, an updated Neoverse V2 called Demeter or Demeter. I'm not too sure. And some updates on their V uh, and E platform. So uh, some of my biggest takeaways is for the first time, Arm is saying they will have leadership with single socket, one thread, integer cloud performance. And that's over Intel and that's over um, that's over AMD. Now, I don't think that, that they know what Ampere computing is coming up with, but but um, uh, we'll see. The other thing was that Grace, NVIDIA's Grace uh, super chip is in manufacturing. And the claim there was two times the performance per watt uh, over, a, oh, over x86. And I, I think that was a big deal. Uh, also, there was a disclosure, an AWS disclosure, that 48 out of the top 50 AWS EC2 customers are running Graviton 2. And by the way, that doesn't mean they've moved off of x86 and moved uh, solely onto Graviton 2, but it says that they are running production uh, workloads. I thought that was impressive. And, you know, Dave Brown, we had him uh, uh, twice on the 6.5 Summit uh, to talk about uh, his homegrown silicon. I thought that was uh, uh, is is great and you know just stepping back, Daniel. I mean, the company has has just has come such uh, a, a long way. And Arm, being a British company, is they don't they don't flex a lot. But um, two days ago in their infrastructure announcement, man, they flexed. Uh, they're like, hey, we are first with memory bandwidth, with the highest level of memory bandwidth. Uh, we were first over a hundred cores. We were first with DDR5 and PCI Gen 5. We were the first one with over 500 specint rate uh, 2017 with the Alibaba Yidian 710. I mean, they, they were on a freaking roll. And then they're like, hey, and don't forget, uh, when it comes to DPUs uh, and network and security uh, offload, whether it's AWS Nitro, Intel Mount Evans, Marvell Octeon, Intel Bluefield, AMD Pensando, all based on ARM uh, IP. So serious, serious uh, flex going on uh, into the future, but also uh, showing what they did uh, in the past. And I have to tell you, in my mind, this is kind of this pivotal moment. We're going to have to see the companies that come out with Nearverse uh, V2 to see if everything lives up to it. Uh, but I do know that ARM is a very... Um, conservative company in the claims they make and they have to be extra conservative because they don't make chips. They make IP that chip companies um, pull in to uh, make their chips uh, better. And I'll end with, with all this, I'm interested to see what Ampere has with Ampere One that's, uh, that's been sampling uh, since May that has a custom CPU architecture based on an ARM ISA and some other uh, custom IPs. More use more companies using ARM to build silicon. <laughs> so hey, um, you said a lot. You did it well. What I, I guess I'll lean into here is the ARM ecosystem's growing. The ARM adoption is becoming more crystallized. Um, the x86 ARM debate will rage on for a lot of different uh, particular, both in the data center and in the PC space. But ARM is here to stay. I think any debate about that is over at this point. Um, the focus on power performance will always cause the geeks to want to geek out and do benchmarks and test. Uh, you know, the company has already gained a foothold. You mentioned all the different architectures, Pat, that are based on ARM already. You know, we talked about effectively every hyperscale cloud provider that's serious right now has at least one. Uh, offering that's built on ARM or an ARM variant from an Ampere or something like that. And so ARM is here to stay. You know, I think we're going to rage on to the debates about, you know, the very large specific workloads that have been optimized and optimized and optimized on x86. And can ARM bring the developer crowd along and bring that kind of the SAP workload? Is that going to ever be as run as well in a data center on ARM as it will on um, on x86, and I think the answer is that's where it's heading. <laughs> and so, 
Pat, you know, I think ARM's being more aggressive. They're a public company now. Uh, I think that's going to put pressure on them to be more exciting with their roadmap um, and try to build investor sentiment and strength. But I also think we've all watched Intel and we've watched AMD and we watched NVIDIA and we know operational uh, execution is everything in this space. So can they get this out? Can they get it out on time? Um, and of course, like you said, just getting it out. Um, sorry, you're right, Pat. Soon to be public company. Um, can they get it out? Can they get it on time? They're going to be held to a much higher standard over those the next several quarters. And then, of course, who builds on it and how quickly are they able to get what they're building on ARM into market? But they were exciting announcements. Uh, they definitely look like they're going hard at it in that data center space. And um, competition's good. I don't know. You and I say that a lot. I am not going to deviate. Good stuff, Daniel. No, I think it's, you know, the time... There was a lot of criticism uh, around SoftBank's acquisition and of ARM and, you know, SoftBank in, in general. And SoftBank has laid a bunch of eggs, but uh, ARM was clearly a success, gave ARM time to come into the pits and make some serious investment. And some of the biggest IP areas they invested in uh, were infrastructure and automotive. And those businesses are taking off. Uh, IoT didn't... Um, uh, they're selling off and laying off a lot of people in IoT, particularly on the software side. And that bet didn't work. But quite frankly, IoT um, didn't scale quickly as any of us uh, thought uh, that it would. And I'm looking forward to um, them going public. 